Hello, I'm here today with Geraldine Gibson, who is the CEO of AQ Metrics, and we're here to talk about uh, regulatory technology or RegTech, and more specifically data and analytics and, and how they're used. So, welcome, Geraldine. Thank you. Where are some of the, uh, the trends that you're seeing emerging around the use of data and analytics in the financial markets industry? I think, Mike, everybody's aware of robo advisory and what that means and how that works, but the oftentimes ignored area is robo compliance. And in fact, to have robo compliance in your organization is almost the same as having robo advisory because you have to use the same data analytics to get the end result. So, what we do at AQ Metrics is we look at robo compliance in the same way as you would look at robo advisory, but we are turning the data on its head to say what are the risks as opposed to the opportunities. So, if we're talking about robo compliance, how does that actually work? Can you give me an example? Sure. So, we look at the same things as robo-analytics look at. We look at the portfolios, we look at the risks in the portfolios, we look at the opportunities in the portfolios, we look at the balancing of the portfolios, and we predict, you know, if something was to occur in those portfolios, what would the impact be? But we don't predict where trends in investment should occur, we say where the impact will be from a compliance perspective. So what will the cost to the business be if a scenario occurs from a compliance perspective, as opposed to robo-advisory where it's what is the opportunity for the business if a scenario was to occur. Mm. And I suppose one of the advantages of this is you're taking out some of the manual, um, I guess, processes that are involved in, in this, this um, compliance. Absolutely. I mean, the reason why robo-advisory and robo-compliance is feasible today is simply down to cloud technology, big data processing, the types of databases that we can build now on the cloud compared to what we would have built in the past um, in-house in organisations. So it makes it accessible to all um, and makes it feasible for us then to do the deep data analytics that are required in order to show uh, the results of scenarios. So how does AQ Metrics uh, f help in this area? Where are some of the areas that you're really focused on? So we focus quite a lot on visualisation and reporting of risks. We focus a lot on the costs of those risks to the business and the penalties that somebody may incur within their organisation if they're in breach of regulations. Um, we focus on the automation of data aggregation and data analytics. We carry out some best practice techniques in data analytics. You know, we look at applied linguistics, um, derivatives conversion, text matching, all the old things that people did in the big infrastructures we can now do over the cloud and advance it further because with the processing power in the cloud now we can in fact rescore analytics and based on the rescoring of the analytics we can apply quantitative and qualitative analysis on top of that. So it's quite powerful, it's quite fast, the customer acquisition costs of onboarding customers in the cloud using this data is faster too because we've built routines into our software. You know, our machines take on the data, it validates the data, it cleanses the data, and then it aggregates it and analyzes it. So we provide a golden source of data to our customers from which then they can slice and dice in any manner that they wish and run predictive scenarios on top. So do you predominantly work with, uh, with buy side or sell side or is it a mixture of both? So it's a mixture of both for us, Mike. Our clients consist of fund administrators, fund managers, investment managers, broker dealers. And we, you know, we do quite a lot down in the data level, as I've talked to you before about our data analytics. You know, we built our, and architected our data model in such a manner that it could accommodate not only the low volumes of data that come through for buy side clients, but also the extremely high and big data volumes that come through for the sell side clients. And then we further our outreach of our data model to be able to hook into external data providers and take that data and make it consistent within our data model so that many clients could get the advantages of big data from external sources as well as just our own data. Excellent. Sounds fantastic. Geraldine, thank you. Thank you.